Chapter 25, Verbal Behavior. Verbal Behavior and Properties of Language. In verbal behavior, there are the formal properties of language and the functional properties of language. The formal properties of language involve the topography or the form or structure of the verbal response. So what does that look like? And then the functional properties involve the causes of the response or the function of the response. There are different components of language and one common misconception about Skinner's analysis of verbal behavior is that he rejected the formal classifications of language. And it's not that he disagreed with those classifications of language, it's just as a behavior analyst, he looked at language according to function or the causes or functions of the classification. So now we'll talk about the development of verbal behavior. In 1957, Skinner published the book Verbal Behavior and he believed that it would prove to be his most important work. And then a linguist who had published his own account of language the same year as Skinner released Verbal Behavior, uh, Noam Chomsky, was also a very outspoken critic about Skinner's work. Um, so Skinner never responded to his review. He just didn't think, he just didn't want to bother, I guess, because it just seemed very condescending. Um, and he clearly misunderstood Skinner's um, behaviorism and his view on verbal behavior. Skinner proposed that language is learned behavior. It's acquired, extended, and maintained by the same types of environmental variables and principles that control nonverbal behavior. So for example, stimulus control, motivating operations, reinforcement, and, and extinction. So basically he looks at verbal behavior in the same way as a three-term contingency. So what's the antecedent? What is the behavior or the topography? Um, of the verbal behavior, and then what is the consequence that maintains that verbal behavior. Skinner defines verbal behavior as behavior that is reinforced through the mediation of another person's behavior. And it involves a social interaction between a speaker and a listener. Verbal behavior involves social interaction between speakers and listeners. In this interaction, the speaker gains access to reinforcement and control their environments through the behavior of the listeners. Skinner's verbal behavior is primarily concerned with the behavior of the speaker. The listener must learn how to reinforce the speaker's verbal behavior and that means listeners are taught to respond to words and interact with speakers. Skinner identified six different types of elementary verbal operants. And those are the manned, tact, echoic, interverbal, textual, and transcription. The manned is a type of verbal operant in which a speaker asks for what he wants or needs. The man starts with a motivating operation. Then the speaker requests the item that they want or need. And then the speaker is given specific reinforcement by the listener. Mans are the first verbal operands acquired by a human child. Skinner also points out that the man is the only verbal operant that directly benefits the speaker and that the man gets a speaker reinforcers such as edibles, toys, attention, or the removal of an aversive stimuli. And mans often become strong forms of verbal behavior because of the specific reinforcement. And this reinforcement satisfies an immediate deprivation condi condition or removes some type of aversive stimulus. The tact is a type of verbal operant in which a speaker names things and actions that the speaker has direct contact with through any of the sense modes. 
The tact is under the functional control of a nonverbal discriminative stimulus. So this could be something that they see in the environment. Then the tact or the behavior is that they label something they see in the environment. Could be a car, uh, could be a cookie. And then this produces a generalized condition reinforcement, such as praise from a listener. So for example, this student has learned when they've labeled something, they've gotten reinforced for labeling something. The next verbal operant is the echoic, and this is a verbal operant that occurs when a speaker repeats the verbal behavior of another speaker. The echoic operant is controlled by a verbal discriminative stimulus. that has point-to-point -point correspondence and formal similarity with the response, which then results in a generalized conditioned reinforcer such as praise. So for example, a speaker says car, another speaker says car, and then the other speaker says great job saying car. So it's basically imitation. So in the last section, I mentioned something about point-to-point -point correspondence. And basically that means that the stimulus and the response or response product occurs when the beginning, middle, and end of the verbal stimulus matches the beginning, middle, and end of the response. So hearing the word car and saying the word car, that would have point-to-point -point correspondence. Hearing the word drive and saying the word car does not have point-to-point -point correspondence. And then I also mentioned formal similarity. And this occurs when the controlling antecedent stimulus and the response share the same sense mode. So they're both visual or they're both auditory or tactile and they physically resemble each other. So it, in a coex, the SD is verbal, and then the response is verbal. So that would be formal similarity. The next verbal operant is copying a text. Skinner also presented copying a text as a type of verbal behavior in which a written verbal stimulus has point-to-point -point correspondence and formal similarity with a written verbal response which then results in a generalized condition stimulus reinforcer. And because this relation has the same defining features as echoic and imitation as it relates to sign language, the three will be treated as one category, echoic. The next verbal operant is the intraverbal. The intraverbal is a type of verbal operant in which a speaker differently responds to the verbal behavior of others. They're also important components of many normal intellectual repertoires. So for example, asking somebody what their name is, the response is they tell you their name, and then the generalized condition reinforcer could be some type of praise or continuation, continuation of a conversation. And in an interverbal, there is formal similarity and it does not have point-to-point -point correspondence. Textual behavior is reading without any implications that the reader understands what is being read. So the textual operant has point-to-point -point correspondence but not formal similarity between the stimulus and the response product. So for example, seeing the word shoe, then reading the word shoe because you see the word shoe, and then receiving praise for reading the word shoe. The next verbal operant is transcription. Transcription consists of writing and spelling words that are spoken. Skinner also refers to this behavior as taking dictation. Transcription is a type of verbal behavior in which a spoken verbal stimulus controls a written, typed, or fingerspelled response, and then the speaker is provided with generalized conditioned reinforcement.
There is point-to-point -point correspondence, but no formal similarity. For example, someone says shoe, I write shoe, and then somebody tells me good job. 